Hi everyone, it's Lisa Mears. Today I'm designing 10 cards using Queen & Company's Great Outdoors Shaker Kit. This kit contains everything you need to make fun shaker cards in an outdoorsy theme. It includes mountains, fire pit, log cabin, lantern, an RV, a tent, and a compass, all of which can be created as shaker pieces on your cards. And in total, this kit includes 21 foam shakers already pre-cut in the shapes you need to make your shaker pieces. The kit also comes with a 6x6 paper pad, 28 dies, a stamp set, and shaker bits. If you want to see an unboxing of everything that's included in the kit, I will have a link to an unboxing video in the description box below. I will also have a link to all of the supplies used listed below as well as on my blog, and card measurements will also be listed in my blog at lisamearsdesigns.com. So I'm starting out by using this green solid paper. This is from the 6x6 solid paper pad. That's an add-on set from Queen & Company. All of the colors correspond to the colors in the pattern paper pad. I die cut trees using the two tree dies that are included in the kit. And now I'm just adding some green ink to the edges of those trees just for some added dimension. And I also want to mention that that green solid paper has a lighter green shade on one side of the paper and a darker green shade on the reverse and I just die cut a bunch of trees on both sides of that paper to use on my upcoming cards. So for my first card I'm making a mini slimline card and I have a piece of eight and a half by eleven sheet of white cardstock that I'm cutting down to seven inches by six inches and scoring at three and a half inches on the seven inch side. Next I have a piece of the brown solid paper from the solid paper pad as well as a brown pattern paper and I'm using the mountain outline die which is also an add-on. All of the outline dies for this set are add-ons that you would purchase separately. So the mountain outline die is being die cut with the pattern paper and then the other die that you see there on the left hand side that is the piece that you're going to use to cover your shaker. So here's the outline die cut and that's going to be in the back of my shaker and then here's the piece that cuts the top part of your shaker. It gives you two pieces. It actually gives you the outline and then this mountain shape, which I'm going to take that die again and die cut another mountain so that I can get the inside piece of that mountain because I wanted to have some extra mountains for my scene on my card. Next I'm taking one of Queen & Company's curvy border dies and just die cutting a piece of the green solid cardstock. This is going to be a little hillside border kind of representing grass on my scene and I'm just inking it up with some green ink and just dabbing my ink dauber on the top of that cardstock just to add some texture. I'm also using a a brown ink to add some um, texture here to the mountains so just putting some brown ink on the edges of all of those mountains I love to ink up the edges of all of my die cuts I just think it adds for extra and texture um, when you're making scene cards like this so you can see I have two mountains and those are going to be in the background and I also am going to take some of those trees that I die cut earlier and position those within the background you'll also see that I have a piece of that tree pattern paper measures five and three quarter inches by three and one quarter inch so here I'm just adding all the trees to my scene. I'm just positioning everything where I want it to go. And once I have it in a good position, then I'll go ahead and start adding glue to all of these pieces. Notice that I'm adding those mountains down first before I add that hillside border because the hillside border is actually going to be on top of the mountains. Also notice that the mountains in the background are from the solid cardstock. So those were cut with the die that came in the kit that cuts the border out. So those were the inside pieces that cut out when I cut out the mountain. Here I just turn the paper over. I'm just trimming off the side of that hillside border that extended beyond the edge. And then I also took the die that you see there laying on my table. That will cut out your mountain tops. So it will look like there's a little bit of snow there on the tops of those mountains. So I just die cut those out of some white cardstock and I'm just adding them there to the tops of my mountains. 
For my sentiment, I die cut this rectangle banner. It's a stitched rectangle. It's from Queen & Company's Foundation 8 Banner Dies. And I'm going to stamp out the sentiment, Another Year of Adventure Awaits. So I'm just lining everything up there in my Misty, and then I stamp that down with some black ink. And now I'm ready to create my mountain shaker piece. So I take out the mountain foam piece and take out the middle. The middle part you will not need, so you can just set that aside. These foam pieces have the double-sided adhesive on the back and on the front, so I just peeled back the back part to expose the adhesive, and then just press that on to my mountain die-cut piece with the pattern paper. Next, I'm going to take out some of these shaker bits that came in the kit. These are some round orange shaker pieces, and I'm just going to pop those into my shaker. And then I'm going to find the pre-cut acetate piece that corresponds with this mountain shaker. And then I'm going to peel back the top part of this foam piece to expose the adhesive and then just press down the acetate piece. So everything has adhesive on it, everything's pre-cut. Just make sure all those shaker bits stay inside your shaker when you apply this. If not, it's no big deal. Just pick them up and pop them back in. So here's where the outline piece um, that you die cut earlier comes into play. So I'm just going to add some glue to the back of this outline piece. This one was cut with the solid brown cardstock and just add that there right to the front because that will cover up all of that white foam. And now you have your shaker piece. But I'm not done yet. I want to add some of these snow caps to the tops of my mountain. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some glue to the back of these and just add them there to the shaker piece. So now I'm going to finish assembling this card. I'm going to go ahead and add some glue to my sentiment, add that there along the bottom of my card, and then add some glue to the back of the shaker piece, and add that right above my sentiment. Then I'm going to add that to a piece of brown cardstock that is cut at 5 and 7 eighths by 3 and 3 eighths, and then I'm adding that to my card base and finishing up with some epoxy dots. The epoxy dots are an add-on that Queen and Company does sell. And that completes card one. So moving on to card two, I have this mountain that I die cut out of the mountain die that's included in the kit, just adding some brown ink to the edges. And I also have a mountain, actually two mountains, that I die cut out of the outline die. And those were all die cut out of the solid brown cardstock that's included in the solid 6x6 six six paper pad, which was the add-on. And I die cut those three mountains. So two of them are larger that were die cut with the outline die. And then the smaller one was die cut with the... Um, one that was included in the kit. So I also have this border. I'm using the curvy border from Queen and & Company and I just die cut some of the yellow pattern paper and added some yellow ink to the edges and I'm just kind of positioning everything where I want it on my scene and once I have everything where I want it I'll just add some glue and then add it to the RV pattern paper. That RV pattern paper is five and a quarter inches by four inches. And just like with the previous card, I add the mountains first and then add those hillside borders. I'm adding the largest one first and then I'll just snip off the excess cardstock and then I'll add the smaller one towards the bottom and snip off the ends and then just finish up by adding some more yellow ink to the edges of that panel. I also die cut the snow caps with some white cardstock and I'm just adding some gray ink to the edges just to add some dimension and so that they stand out against that white RV pattern paper. And then I'm just adding them there to the tops of those mountains. Next, I'm ready to put this RV shaker together. So I have my foam piece. I'm going to take out the middle. Now, I do want to mention, save those middle pieces because you can use those for foam to add up different sentiments and different things on your card. So don't throw those away. Then I'm taking the outline die, and I die cut a piece of this pattern paper. Now, remember that these outline dies are an add-on. If you don't have the outline dies, you can simply peel back the adhesive and then stick this foam piece directly on a piece of pattern paper, and you would just have have to trim around it to get the shape of the RV. But having those outline dies, it's just so useful and convenient so that you don't have to do any cutting. 
Okay, so this particular die came with the kit, and that I die cut with just some of the teal solid cardstock, and it gives me these two pieces. That middle piece you can just discard. You don't need that. You just need that outline. And then I also have the door to the RV. I die cut that out of some of the gray cardstock, and I'm just inking up the edges with some gray ink. You can also see the other pieces there. I have the wheel I got also cut out of the gray cardstock and adding some gray ink to the edges. You can also see the other pieces that I die cut there on the table. So here I'm just going to go ahead and start making the shaker. I'm just adding some of these pink um, they're round pink shaker toppings, just putting them inside the RV. And then I'm going to peel back the layer on top to expose the adhesive and then take the piece of acetate that is shaped just like the RV and then just place that right on top to secure those shaker pieces inside. And then I'm going to take that outline, just add some glue, and then add it to the top of the RV shaker piece. So I want to show you here the sheet that comes with your shaker kit and it kind of gives you an idea of what dies you need to make these pieces. So if you're unsure what goes together, refer to this instruction sheet in your kit. So here I have this piece that goes across the length of the RV and I'm just adding that there right on top. Next I'm going to add the door. And when I add the door I am going to make sure that it's flush with the bottom edge of that RV. Next, I'm going to add the circle part for the window on the door. I just add the gray piece right back in. You'll see me a little bit later. I'll come back and change that to yellow because I don't like how the gray is just all one color. And then I add this piece towards the bottom. Notice that the step at the bottom of that, you want to make sure that that step is lined up with the bottom of the door. And then just add the wheel on. And then the window, here I'm just inking up the edges of the window, so we'll add some glue on the window and then add that to the RV. And then we will add the yellow canopy right at the top of that window. So now my shaker piece is complete and I'm just going to go ahead and finish up this scene by adding a few of the trees to the scene. So I add one there off to the left and then I'll go ahead and add glue to the RV and add that there. I'm going to overlap it a little bit, so just adding the RV right on top of the edge of the tree. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp out my sentiment before I add some, some of my other trees. Now I do want to mention when you add your sentiment it might have been best if I added the sentiment first before adding the shaker piece. So that's just a little hint for you guys. Maybe just add your sentiment first because the, the shaker piece adds some dimension there and it, it was a little bit hard to get my block in there. So I just added some more of the trees and then I'm adding that to a pink piece of cardstock that measures five and three eighths by four and an eighth, and then adding that to an A2 size card base. I come in with some of the epoxy dots and add a few there, and then here's where I add that yellow circle to the door, and that completes card two. For card three, I'm going to incorporate the tent shaker. So first I die cut this piece of pattern paper with one of the curvy border dies. And I'm just going to add some green ink to the edge because this is going to be my grass and I just wanted to add some texture to the grass. And then I also have this scalloped die from Queen & Company's Foundation 1 die set. And I also have this die from the Foundation 8 die set. I die cut that out of some wood grain pattern paper. I'm just going to take some brown ink and ink up the edges of that wood grain paper. And that piece is going to be adhered to that scallop yellow piece. I also have a piece of star pattern paper that's cut down to four inches by five and a quarter inches. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some glue on the back of my green border sheet and add it to the star pattern paper and then just trim around just to cut the excess off. And I'm going to go ahead and start working on my shaker. So I'm using the tent shaker and I just took out the middle and then the outline die, I die cut some yellow cardstock and I'm just going to peel back the backing off of the foam and add the foam directly to that yellow piece that I die cut with the outline die. I'm going to go ahead and add some of my shaker bits right inside of that triangle. I'm adding some green as well as some of the brown bits. And then I'm going to peel back the top layer to expose the adhesive and then I'm going to add my acetate right to the top of that tent piece. 
And then I have the die that came in the kit and I die cut a piece of the striped pattern paper and that's going to go right on top of my shaker. So just going to add some glue to the back of that and add that directly to the shaker. And then I took these two dies and die cut some yellow paper and those dies I'm just going to add some glue to the back of those and then just add them there right to the edge of the tent for the tent opening. And the shaker element is now complete. So I'm gonna work on this little scene. I'm gonna add some glue to the back of these trees. I'm gonna add two trees here, one on each side of the tent. And then I'm gonna glue the tent down to the middle of that circle. And then I will add that to that card front. I am using a sentiment, hope you spend your special day in your happy place. I am using an acrylic block here and I just curved the sentiment so that it would fit on that banner. That banner was cut with the Foundation 7 die and I just stamped that out so that it's now in a curved shape. And I want to add some foam so I can pop this up. So I'm just using some of the extra foam that came in the kit and just trimming that down and adding it to the back of the sentiment and adding that there to the bottom of that card. So I chose that sentiment shape because it actually is the same shape with a hillside border. And then just add that to an A2 size card base and added some epoxy dots and that card is complete. For this next card I'm using some foundation dies from Queen & Company. I have this stitched rectangle that is from foundation 8 dies and then I have this scallop rectangle piece cut out of the foundation number 4 dies. It does put a stitching along the edge which I love and then this frame is cut with the foundation number 7 dies. I'll also be using this banner die from the foundation number two die set for my sentiment. I'm going to go ahead and start adhering these pieces together. That scallop was cut with the pattern paper, the floral print, and that's being adhered to the large rectangle. The large rectangle was cut with the dark pink solid, so that's from the solid paper pack, as well as that border was cut with a yellow piece from the solid paper pack. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting my shaker piece together. This one I'm using the lantern. So I used the corresponding outline die to cut this solid piece of teal cardstock and I'm going to remove the backing on the shaker and adhere that directly to that outline piece that I die cut. I'm going to add some of the yellow shaker pieces inside of that and then I'll remove the backing off the top of that foam to expose the adhesive and then I will get the acetate piece that fits right on top of there. Press that down and then the die that came in the kit, I die cut a piece of this teal pattern paper. Just going to add some glue to the top and add that to the top to finish off this shaker. I die cut the lantern out of the blue solid cardstock. And then some of the corresponding pieces here I die cut with the same dark pink solid cardstock that I use for the card. So we have a piece here that goes at the top of the lantern and then a piece there at the bottom and I'm just going to add glue and add those to the lantern. And then that shaker piece goes right inside in the middle part of the lantern. So I'm going to position the lantern so that it is centered in the middle of that card front. I am going to cut some foam down and add it to the back of the sentiment and add that underneath my lantern. The sentiment says it's your day to shine. So I just stamp that onto the banner and I have some of this blue string that I'm going to use for the top of the lantern. This is Queen & Company's sparkle string in the blue color. So I just added a glue dot there to the center of the circle part of the lantern and then added the twine directly onto the glue dot to connect it. I'm also going to bring in some of these flowers from Queen & Company. These are the Queen & Company Bling Flowers and they come in various color packs. So here's a yellow one just adding with a glue dot and then I'm going to add two of the blue ones, one on each side. And again just putting a glue dot on the back of those to adhere those to my card front. And I will add a couple of epoxy dots on each side of the sentiment and then I will add that to an A2 size card front. And that will complete this shaker card. For card five I'm using another of the curvy border dies to die cut that green solid cardstock and adding just some green ink just to add some texture there to the bottom of that grass. Then I'm just going to add that, so add some glue and add it to that starry background that I cut 
out of the pattern paper pad. That measures four by five and a quarter. And I'm just going to trim off the excess green that is just extending beyond the edges. And then I'm going to add that layer to the orange solid cardstock, and that measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So let's go ahead and build the shaker component. I am going to use this fire. So I have the outline die I cut out of this yellow solid. And then I have this die, which is part of the kit. I cut out of some orange pattern paper. And then I'm going to take my foam piece, just take that backing off of the foam piece and add it directly to the solid that was cut with the outline die. Now here's a good example of why you would need your outline dies instead of using some fussy cutting there because it would be really hard to take your scissors and cut around that fire. I added some shaker bits inside, peeled back the top layer of the backing to expose the adhesive. Then I'm taking the acetate and putting the acetate right on top to seal in those shaker pieces. And then I'm taking the top outline piece and I'm just adding some glue and I'm going to add that directly to the front of that fire to complete my shaker component. So I die cut the log out of the wood grain pattern paper and I'm just adding some brown ink to the edges. I also die cut the sticks out of the same wood grain paper. I die cut two. On one of them I actually die cut the reverse of that paper because I wanted that little piece that's extending on the edge to go in the same direction as my first stick. And you'll see more what I'm talking about when I actually put this card together and I'll explain it a little bit better in just a few minutes. But I go ahead and add some ink to the edges and then I also die cut the marshmallows out of some white cardstock and just adding some gray ink to the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and start creating this scene by adding the wood at the bottom there on the grass and then adding the fire right on top. And then here are my sticks. So you can see how they're both going to be pointing in the opposite directions and because that little piece that's extending on the bottom I wanted both of them to appear at the bottom. So that's why one of the sticks I actually die cut the reverse of the pattern paper in order to make it look like they're both on the bottom. So hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> I die cut the banner. This is from the Foundation 5 die set and stamped out sending you s'more love and I cut part of that banner off because it's going to it's going to be glued down flush with the left side of that card. I also die cut some stars out of some solid yellow paper. That's also from the Foundation 5 die set from Queen and Company. So I'm just going to add some of the stars there to my scene. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the sticks with the marshmallows at the ends and those sticks are extending beyond the edge. So I'm just going to snip off some of the stick, add some epoxy dots to the front of this card. And then I'm going to take this card and add it to a white card base and that completes this card. For card six I have this foundation die that I die cut the teal cardstock as well as the white cardstock that's from foundation three and then this die is from foundation eight set and I die cut the solid red cardstock. So now I'm going to take one of the curvy border dies and I'm going to put it there at the top of the white cardstock and die cut that out and then that is going to go towards the bottom of this teal paper. So this die that I die cut these rectangles out actually has a stitching along the edge but I'm going to go ahead and use that same die from foundation die 3 that I initially cut these papers out with and die cut this piece out again so that the stitching appears along the bottom of that white since I had cut that bottom part off when I was adhering that paper. So if you haven't guessed yet this is going to be a winter scene that's why I had the white hill that will represent snow and then I just added some of the white gel pen to some of those trees to make it look like there's snow on the trees so I'm just tucking those in. A little hint when you're adhering that snow to your cardstock don't glue it all the way to the tippy top because you want to be able to stick those trees inside. So I used the cabin outline die to die cut this wood grain paper.
and I'm going to take the foam square piece and add that directly to that pattern paper and then the top piece was cut with just some solid brown cardstock. So here I'm adding some of the shaker bits right inside that square, then peeling back that top layer to expose the adhesive and adding the acetate square right on top. And then I'm going to add some glue to the piece that I die cut in the solid brown. And on this piece you only need to add glue to the square part. You don't need to add it to the roof line. I actually started to apply it to the roof line and then realized I didn't need to apply it there because it's not going to be pressed down flat on that outline piece. I added a red door and added an epoxy dot for the doorknob. And now I'm going to go ahead and stamp out the sentiment. I hope your birthday is cozy and relaxing. I die cut some white snowflakes from Queen & Company's Holiday Foundation die set. And because these snowflakes are so intricate, I did have some double-sided adhesive tape on the back of my cardstock before running them through my die cut machine. That way it makes the snowflake a complete sticker and I just have to peel back the adhesive backing to stick them down. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the cabin. I also add some epoxy dots to the middle of the snowflakes as well as to the snow. And then I'll add that to the red die cut rectangle that I previously cut out and add that to an A2 size card base. And I wanted to go ahead and add some glitter to the front of this cabin. I wanted to make it look like there was real snow on here. So I just added some of the glue to certain places here on the card front, the roof line, some of the trees, and then just sprinkled some chunky white glitter to the top of the glue and then I just shake off the excess. And that will complete this card. For card seven, I'm using this foundation die. It is a large rectangle. It does have stitching on the edges and it also has this circle die that you can put in the middle. It's one of the same dies that I used in a previous card with the campfire, only this time I'm die cutting them together to cut the circle out of that striped paper. I also took that circle die and die cut a piece of the star pattern paper so that I can set it right back inside. So this large piece that I die cut out, I am adding to an A2 size card base and then adding the star paper right inside that circle. I also die cut this long rectangle that is also from the foundation's eight die set from Queen and & Company. And I added that to the bottom of that card and then die cut this banner. The banner is from Foundation's 10 die set and I added a sentiment, there is adventure in every direction. Now I'm ready to do my shaker element. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the circle. I'm making a card with the compass shaker piece. I'm going to peel back the backing on the foam and this time I'm adding the foam directly to my card front. So here I'm not using the additional outline die for the circle. I'm using the pattern paper on my card front for the background of my shaker. Now if I wanted a different color paper, then I can die cut this circle outline die out of a different pattern paper and then add the foam to that piece but in this case I wanted the stars to be the background so that's why it's being adhered directly to the card front. I did add some liquid glue to the back of that just for some extra security being that it's directly stuck here to the card front. So next I'll add some shaker pieces. Now I'm using some of the silver diamonds. These are extra um, shakers that you can purchase on Queen & Company's website. They do not come with the kit, but I chose the diamonds because I wanted to use that color on my shaker. I wanted it to look like stars, so that's why I chose that one. So I went ahead and added the acetate front, and now I'm just adding this outline circle that I die cut with the dies that came in the kit. I die cut that out of some of the yellow pattern paper, and then just adding that there to the front. And then I'm gonna use this circle die. This is a directional die. Um, it has the N for north up there at the top, so make sure you get your N up there at the top of your compass. I die cut that out of some white cardstock. I did put double-sided adhesive tape on the back of the white cardstock before running it through the die cut machine, just to make it easier to add to the front of that shaker. And then you have these other directional arrows that come with this particular um, shaker piece and I just die cut that star and then the little directional arrow out of some teal cardstock there. I went ahead and glued that down and I'm going to add an epoxy dot there to the center of that 
star shape. I did die cut some other stars. These are from the Foundations 2 die set. Die cut them out of some yellow and orange cardstock. Adding them there to the card front to finish this up. And then adding some more of those epoxy dots in the same color that I added to the middle of the star in the compass. And that completes this card. For card eight, I'm using some of the curvy borders. I have two different style borders that I'm die cutting out of the pattern paper. So I went ahead and ran those through my die cut machine and just snipping off the ends to get the borders cut out of that pattern paper. I also have a piece of white cardstock that is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm using this as my base so that I can make my scene on this white cardstock. I did use the mountain die and I die cut some mountains, three mountains out of the gray cardstock. But before I add the mountains, I wanted it to give it a kind of like a sky in the background and I'm just cut this piece of yellow pattern paper to the top of that white cardstock. That yellow pattern paper measures four and a quarter by two and a quarter. And then once I adhere that, I'm just going to add the mountains. Now I did add some gray ink to the edges of those mountains and I also added some gray ink to the edges of the mountain tops and just adding those mountain tops there and then just going to position these mountains how I want them on this scene. I have this um, rectangle die. This rectangle die is from the Foundation 3 die set. I'm just positioning that over top of this scene because I want to make sure that when I die cut it out using that rectangle die that all of the mountains and everything is centered within the rectangle. So I was just using that just as a guide. So going ahead and adding all of these mountains. I did use my pencil just to kind of trace those mountains just so that I can make sure I put them back exactly where I want them to be and then just erasing those pencil marks. I'm adding some gray ink to the top of this pattern paper and then some green ink to the top of the green pattern paper. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start by adding the white pattern paper with the trees on it. Just trimming off the excess here and then I'm going to add the green um, border down towards the bottom. I am going to be using the cabin, so I'm just positioning everything within that rectangle die, again, to make sure everything is centered when I die cut it out. So I go ahead and add the green border, and then I'm going to flip that over and trim off the excess. And then I'm going to take that rectangle die and put it directly over that layer that I just made with that scene and then die cut that out. And what that gives me is a nice stitched rectangle border all around the edges of that scene. So I'm gonna make this cabin exactly as I made the cabin in one of my previous cards where I used this cabin. I am adding some ink to the edges of this top uh, die cut piece. Here I'm taking the outline. I did die cut the outline die out of the wood grain cardstock adding the foam piece directly to the wood grain cardstock, adding some shaker pieces inside. Going to peel back the backing from the adhesive foam to expose that adhesive and then just put the acetate right on top. And then I'm gonna put some glue on only the square portion of this cabin. And then I will add that to the front of the shaker piece and then I'm going to add the door. I die cut that out of some solid blue cardstock. And then I'm going to finish creating this scene by adding some trees to the background. I add two trees, one on each side. When you're adding that hill, the green hill, just make sure that you don't um, add glue all the way to the top so you can tuck those trees behind. I place this layer in my misty and I line up the sentiment. The sentiment is hope you spend your special day in your happy place. So I stamp that down in black ink, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add that cabin right to the front. I will add a brown epoxy dot to the door knob, and I'll add that card layer to a piece of blue solid cardstock that measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then that will be added to a white A2 size card base, and then I'll finish this off with just a few blue epoxy dots, some in the top left-hand corner, and then a few around the sentiment and that will complete this card. 
For card nine, I'm going to be making another scene with the RV shaker piece. So I have a hillside border cut out with the same hillside border die that I've been using all along. And I'm adding that to a piece of blue pattern paper that measures five and one eighth by three and seven eighths. I also die cut a scalloped border and this was out of a the striped paper from the paper pad and I'm just adding it there to the bottom and that's going to be layered onto a piece of pink cardstock that measures five and three eighths by four and an eighth and I will do that a little bit later but in the meantime I am inking up the edges of some of these cloud die cuts with some blue ink. These cloud die cuts are from the Foundations 9 die set. So I'm just adding the clouds to the sky there on my scene and just snipping off the excess. Now I'm ready to put my shaker piece together. So I've already die cut the dies out of the pattern paper. So I'm peeling back the adhesive on the back of the foam, adding the foam to the outline piece. And then I'm going to add these shaker pieces. I have some yellow shaker pieces. These are from the Pearls in the Bright collection. Those are an add-on. And then I'm also using the pink ones that came with the kit. So pink and yellow are being included inside the RV. And then I'll peel back the backing there from the foam. And then I will add the acetate piece right on top of that. I will add some glue to the piece of the outline that's going to cover that up. So I'll go ahead and add all of the other pieces here for the RV. Again, if you don't recall which pieces or which order to put these in, you can refer back to your instruction sheet. So here I'm going to go ahead and add the tire, and I'm going to go ahead and add this decorative piece that I die cut out of the flower pattern paper. I'm going to add a little bit of gray ink to the window, add that right on top, and then I'll add the door. I die cut that out of some yellow solid cardstock making sure that that door is lined up with that step there at the bottom. And then I'll add the canopy. I'm gonna go ahead and decide on the yellow canopy. I'm gonna add some trees, but the trees I'm actually gonna snip off the bottoms. I don't want them so long because if I put them so long, they're gonna go over top of the clouds and I wanted them shorter than the clouds. So again, making sure when you add your green hillside border there, don't put glue all the way at the top because you want to have some room to be able to tuck those trees behind it. I'm going to add my sentiment directly to the cloud. The sentiment is, I hope your birthday is cozy and relaxing. Fits perfectly in that large cloud. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my RV. And I'm going to add that entire layer to that pink cardstock that is measured five and three eighths by four and an eighth. And that layer was added to a white A2 size card base. And then to finish this off, I'm adding some pink flowers to the bottom of that card. And that completes card nine. So moving on to card 10, I have this orange solid cardstock. It's four and an eighth by five and three eighths. The polka dot piece is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And then I die cut two stitch circles out of the foundation dies one pack. And that's going to go hand in hand with the compass, which will be my third circle. So I'm just kind of positioning everything where I want them to go on this polka dot paper. That die that I have there is from the shaker kit. It's just the top piece of the shaker. I also die cut a piece of blue solid cardstock from this skinny rectangle border die from foundations eight. I'm going to go ahead and add this border down first. That's going to be tucked underneath those circles. And it does extend beyond the uh, width there of the polka dot paper, but that's okay. I'll just trim off the excess. And then I'm going to go ahead and start by adding the yellow circle, which is my largest circle. And then I will add the teal circle. And then I'll just turn that over and just trim off the extra blue cardstock. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the shaker element together. So I'm going to take the orange circle that I cut out of the outline die for the compass, add the foam directly to the top of that, and then I'll add the shaker bits inside. So I'm using blue, yellow, and green shaker bits. Once I have all those shaker bits in there, I will go ahead and peel back the top um, backing there and then add the acetate right on top of that. And then I will cover up that foam with this 
outline that I die cut out of the dies that came in the kit and then I will add the directional piece right on top of that. That was cut with some blue solid cardstock and we'll add the star in the middle and then we will also add the little pointing arrow piece right to the top pointing to the north direction and then I'll add the dot. Now in my previous card with the compass I added an epoxy dot to the center but here I'm just adding the cardstock piece that was cut out. So then we'll add that shaker to the front of the card. I did die cut a banner from the Foundation 2 set and stamped out I'd be lost without you as the sentiment. I am putting some foam on the left side of that banner just so that the left side is adhered directly to that card base. I'm also going to put a tiny strip of foam along the bottom of the right side of that banner because that will also adhere to the card base. And then just put some glue on the top right which that piece will be adhered to the compass. And then I'm going to add that to a piece of orange cardstock. The orange cardstock is 4 and an eighth by 5 and 3 eighths and then add that to an A2 size card base. I do add a few epoxy dots, although you can't see them really well because of all of the polka dots. They kind of blend in, but I do add a couple. And that is going to complete this card. So here are all the 10 cards I created with Queen & Company's Great Outdoors Shaker Kit. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which card is your favorite. I always love to hear which cards you like the best. If you are interested in this kit, I will have product links in my description box below as well as on my blog at lisamearsdesigns.com. As always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more card making inspiration. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.